All right, so let's learn about basic shading in Blender. So this is a uh, Kodak Hawkeye, um, Kodak Brownie Hawkeye. This is the Flash Edition uh, that I model, and you'll be getting this model uh, as part of our lesson in shading and in uh, uh, UV editing and texturing, all right, and camera and lighting, so on and so forth. So you'll be there'll be a link in the um, description uh, once it's all done. Uh, it's not quite finished yet, the label um, I haven't scanned yet. So let's talk about shader um, and basic shaders in Blender. So I took out all the shaders that are available on this one. So this is just kind of showing you the uh, default look of the object once uh, it's modeled. Uh, it's considered a low polygon uh, mid poly all right there's no subdivision surface everything uh, that's rounding this is based on um, beveling so there's it gets high poly on area where it needs to be beveled and to show those detail all right so it's all in like multiple pieces and just kind of showing you the wireframe right there all right um, let's uh, Let's add some lighting first. So to to easily view this, uh, we can e uh, we can go to Material Preview, which is the third circle or sphere right here. It gives you kind of like a, a image based lighting. But let's uh, kind of introduce how you can add lights to this one on rendered view right here using Photograph. All right, and the best place to go. I mean, there's multiple places, but the one we always go to is. Uh, Polyhaven. So if I go to my browser right here, if you go to polyhaven.com, uh, this comes with uh, CC0, um, uh, Creative Common, free textures basically. HDRI is for lighting your scene, and then of course textures to add um, skin to your uh, object. Okay, so I'm going to go to HDRI right here. And then we're going to pick, I'm going to pick this one right here. It's a photo studio, so it looks like kind of it's inside and we get varying kind of colors in here. Uh, you can also get this one. Um, but I do like this so that we, when we go with our reflection and whatnot, we could see it. So if I click this one here, it will take us to uh, multiple resolutions, okay? So the one by default is 4K. So if your computer is struggling with... Uh, any of these higher numbers you can go to a smaller one but I'm just gonna go with the default one okay which is 4k and of course it's an EXR uh, you can go with a with an EXR or an HDR okay um, both would work um, and um, you know I'm just gonna go with the EXR here I actually already download this so if you click download here then you'll get that in your most likely in your downloads folder okay so that's the first thing we're going to do here is to have a crash course and how to use pictures as, as your lighting all right so I'm going to go back to blender here okay then we're going to go to this section right here all right so let me turn on my screencast first okay press all right so we're seeing uh, whatever I'm clicking right here so we're going to go here which is the environment okay so when you're in here, you can change the color of your background to whatever it is you want. So let me just put all the default settings here. So it would look something like this if you're on final render. So I'm on the fourth one right here, which is basically what you see is what you get. If you render this, it would look something like this. All right, so I'm gonna go to the environment. Uh, in Blender, you default to this much gray. That's why you get to see a little bit of your image. Um, in reality, if you drop that, that's basically no lighting at all. So this is like ambient lighting that we're getting from the default environment color and the brightness. Okay, so the strength is at one. And what I'll do is uh, um, we're going to add that uh, HDR image that we downloaded. Okay, so. Once we download, uh, have that download, simply click on this yellow button right here on the color and then select environment texture. Okay. Once you're in environment texture, you need to navigate and find that um, 
downloads that you do uh, that you downloaded the file that you downloaded okay so now it turns to this purple because it, it says this signifies that it's missing texture missing image so all we have to do is instead of new uh, we are going to click on open because we already downloaded one so click open okay go to your download section and then it's called photo studio law 4 whatever it is you download you select that click open and then here we go so this thing now is as you can see the lighting is based on this image so whatever light you're getting from here is through that window from the front right here it's a little darker right here because there's no direct window we're just getting the light from that section right there okay so we do want to use this one so you can easily preview your image by the way we're using EV as our render engine on the first top right there okay so while we're on EV right here I want you to scroll down here until you see film open up film and then un uh, put a check mark on transparent background so that we're not uh, overwhelmed with all these images and then we could just see our object right here okay so that sets up our lighting now we can concentrate on the shader okay and I'm in just in layout right here and then we can go to shading later there's all these different tabs so I'm in layout I'm looking at my object right here and then we can start with our first shader all right so again I deleted all the sh uh, all the uh, shaders um, if you uh, uh, have one just kind of delete it uh, select it here and click minus just so that we start from the beginning by default you do get a shader so uh, you can modify that but let's just kind of start from scratch okay so first of all what is a shader uh, um, again this is a super basic lesson um, a shader basically defines what the object is surface feature of the object okay if you've seen the movie by Pixar Disney uh, Toy Story back then the technology is still very limited and then their shader the best that it can do is um, show anything as plastic so they can't really show good uh, let's say organic surface uh, whatever uh, whatever the shader that they are using back then um, can do very good plastic but that's pretty much it so they decided instead of you know fighting that uh, capability they embraced it so that's why toy stories are plastic toys so that's why they decided to uh, go with Toy Story the movie because of plastic surface okay so I'm assuming then if uh, they can do really good wood uh, texture and whatnot they would base uh, their movie on whatever it is that they can showcase better okay so if we look at this uh, uh, brownie okay so let me just uh, kind of make sure I save this one and let me open one where um, I uh, already kind of finished the final product here so you could see it all right here we go all right so this is what we're after here okay so it has this plastic body it's a very light uh, it's a film camera by the way this is a film camera it has this strap handle that it has this kind of like a groove grip okay it has metal uh, parts right here tons of metal there's some screws another plastic one for the flash pop and the shutter and then we do have the uh, uh, the uh, looking glass so this is a TLR camera twin uh, lens reflex so you look through here this is the viewfinder and then this is what you're seeing but this is the act this is the lens that's actually taking the photo this is the flash model so it has the uh, flash port and the sync shutter release right here remote shutter and then the label and uh, this is the only thing that's still missing um, uh, I kind of just went online and grabbed um, that photo to extract that part uh, I'll give you a proper one uh, we have to scan the uh, real model and then do a proper one here it's still kind of looking hokey you know it's it's not straight and then the label the pin right here it's ginormous uh, it's not correct so we'll give you a real one here it's just that I'm using this for the uh, for the demo uh, the knob dial right here um, and the uh, film counter right here so this is where you preview uh, the film it's medium format so 
when you dial that, you see the uh, label for the film. It shows you the film counter. And there's a locking mechanism right here. Okay, that kind of releases, and then this thing kind of pops back, or depending on you know which one, uh, makes it. That's how you open it. All right, so we got the whole thing complete, and I would say pretty accurate. It's not exactly the same. I um, I made some design choices to make uh, you know kind of simplify it a bit, but it kind of did the job. Okay, so let me go back to. Uh, this one, which is our lesson, and that's what we're targeting. Okay, so uh, this one has the, um, if I go here to the right, it already has the um, HDRI, so we have the lighting, okay? Remember, uh, I did, uh, if I go to the uh, engine tab right here, the render property tab, uh, under film, we put a check mark on transparent so that we don't see it. So let's start with the bulkiest part uh, the plastic so we're gonna select this back right here okay and um, let me turn on my screencast all right so let's add a shader to this it's plastic so we're just gonna click new uh, by default you get the principal BSDF so principal B BSDF is a super shader in blender uh, so you don't need to go specifically to uh, because back in the day uh, we didn't have this and in order to get plastic, you would select uh, Blin or, or Fong, basically a shader that corresponds to uh, what a plastic might look like. If you want to go with no shine in it and all that, you, you use Lambert. But now we only use this and all the settings right here is what makes it um, whatever it is that you want, all right? So first is the shader for this one, uh, which is the base color. Uh, we just want to make this black, so probably not black all the way, but oh yeah, you can go black all the way. Right here, uh, or it looks like plastic, okay? But um, the uh, the plastic for the brown is quite shiny, um, and we're assuming it's brand new off the factory here, all right? So we're not putting damage or dents or rust or scuffs on this one, so we're assuming here that this is brand spanking new minus the uh, crappy label that I haven't done yet so all right so by changing the color of the uh, base color default uh, no color already okay so it's just black or white we're just dragging that as you, as you can see here if I go all the way white right here and drag this to the blue you get blue one okay so we're just going to uh, um, drag this back at the center okay and then go all the way right here Okay, I mean, you can put zero value now you, that you'll see, uh, notice it. All right, so there's our black. And then uh, right here, the roughness is what um, dictates the uh, shininess, okay? So if I drag this to the right, it'll make it really rough, kind of like um, um, uh, non-shiny plastic, all right? If I go all the way to the left right here, there you go, it's kind of shiny now. That's kind and it's quite reflective. And that's basically what it is on the uh, on the actual product, all right? So I think it's shinier than that. Okay, so let's, all right. I'm guessing here about 120, 130, okay? So let's go with that for now, okay? It's kind of what it looks like, all right? And then we're going to call this one, this is uh, the black plastic. So I'm going to name this one black plastic. Very important that you name this stuff because you're going to accumulate a bunch and then you wouldn't know what to what to, what to use them for, all right? So uh, I still have remnants of the old one right here, so I'm guessing I didn't quite delete everything in here and some escaped and uh, uh, we have the original too, but ignore those for now. All right, we got that black plastic, all right? So which other parts that requires that color? Um, this one right here, which is the front of the camera, this part, okay? So this part right here, uh, instead of clicking new, we can just apply that same material. I mean, I can click new here and then dial in all those numbers, which uh, it's a lot of work, but if you're using the same one, you click right here, and then you simply select the black plastic, and then you basically inherit all the property. You're reusing it. However, this is not a unique 
uh, material. It's not a new material. So if I make changes to this, let's say I just change the black to gray, both of those will get affected. So keep that in mind for now that this is all connected, okay? If you want to make this unique, oh, um, we're doing that next. So we're, we're going to uh, change it a bit, okay? So let's take a look at the, uh, the previous model here, what else uh, would look like that one. It's this framing right here and this one right here. All right, so that one, we're in shader again. I'm gonna select black plastic. This one also, black plastic. All right, and I think the taking lens, at least the first part right here, and there's another one inside. There's two of these. That one right there, and this one will be black plastic. So I'm going to select that. Okay. That's the one inside. And now we're going to have to make part of this one as the glass so that it will see through it. So black plastic also. All right. So that's a black plastic right there. And I think we got everything for the black plastic for now. Uh, that one right there is also black plastic, the uh, strap pin. Okay. And we're going to. All right, that's black plastic right there. And I think we're good. All right, so there's two uh, metal kind of color here. Um, everything else that's supposed to be metal. And then this one right here, it's kind of like a brush aluminum. It's not very shiny. It has a little bit of coarse um, thing in the uh, texture. So uh, it does look a little different. It's the same kind of uh, texture as the, uh, the label right here once that's applied. Okay, so let's add this first. So we're going to click New. All right, and then we're going to call this one, uh, I'm going to call it uh, aluminum. Or in Peel Bridges, it's aluminum. All right, aluminum. And let's make this aluminum. Uh, first thing we need to do is this is metal. We're going to go right here, metallic. And there's a level here, but it doesn't really matter. There's no halfway. It's either it's not metal or dielectric or all the way to one, which is to make it metal. All right, so by simply sliding it in there, it already has that kind of metallic look, but it's way too white right here. Uh, let's make that a little bit more like a silver color. And it's uh, really rough. Well, not really, about halfway. So let's kind of change that so it's not chrome like this, shiny. So it's Let's make it kind of like that. All right, I think that looks good. Okay, so roughness is about 0.37 that I put in there. You can go 0.4 on this one, I think. Let's just use uh, whole numbers. All right, there you go. And then the ring that surrounds the lens right there is the same material as that. Okay, and um, well, let me go back here. Let me make this just a little bit darker right there more gray okay let me select this ring right here and then select it down here and click the aluminum so it inherits that and as far as the aluminum uh, i think uh, just this one right here which is the label i'm going to put this for now as that aluminum then we can make it kind of unique later okay so we got those uh next we're going to go with all the metal parts the chrome part okay so let's uh uh select one of the metal parts, which is, let's say, this one, which is the locking mechanism. I'm going to click New, okay? And then we're going to do the same thing, metallic. Uh, we're going to make the base color uh, a little darker. Not too dark. Right there, and then since it's kind of like chrome, uh, we're going to have to make this one shinier, so less rough right here. Dial that down like 150.15 right there. All right, that gives it that chrome metallic look. And then now let's find all the pieces that would uh, uh, inherit that color as well. So it's this part right here, which is the, uh, this is the strap metal lock. All right, so I will go drop down 
and then uh, material. So I need to name this one, sorry. So chrome metal, all right, chrome metal. And that inherits the name as well. So the uh, this uh, button right here, I mean the screw, chrome metal. Oh, let me just make sure which one did we name it, chrome metal. All right, because I forgot to delete the other ones and they're still there, chrome metal. Same thing for that. And we got one right here. Another screw right there. Okay, and there's like two kind of pins right here for the label. That one as well. Okay, let me just kind of check. Uh, I think this one right here for the dial, the pin from metal. Let's take a look at the back. All right, there's one that's right here, but it's going to have to do our multi uh, uh, later on. So we'll, we'll include that as part of it. Okay, so we'll go back to that. Okay. And this one as well. Uh, let's put the black plastic now on this. It's the same kind of material. All right, there it is. Okay. Uh, next will be uh, this part, this object right here, which is the, I think this is the flash. Uh, that's how you activate the flash. And that's the shutter right there. And the dial are all the same kind of color. Okay, so that's plastic also, but gray plastic. All right, let's make a new one. Call this one uh, gray plastic. Okay, and of course it's not metallic. Uh, let's just give it that gray color first. Let's go dark. Okay, um, I think a little darker. All right, so when you guys are following along, you can just eyeball this, you know, around there. And then it's a lot shinier, a lot shinier. Uh, not as shiny as the black one, maybe the same. Pretty close. All right, there we go. All right, there it is. Then we're going to select this one, which will inherit that as well. Gray plastic. The knob dial. Gray plastic. Uh, there's a base right here that I forgot. So that base for the dial, that's black plastic. All right, so we got the plastic there. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. The port. This on metal. So I forgot this. So that's a metal port, chrome metal. This is the uh, remote shutter. Oh no, I think that's the flash port. Well, anyway, they're both metal. All right. Okay. That looks good. All right. So we got those. So now we can concentrate on just working on uh, the other parts. Uh, so let's go with the glass first. So let's select this one and click new. As you can see here under the uh, uh, the uh, surface right here, you can select and change this to glass. So if you do change this to glass, it will have that kind of glass look already, but you have to kind of tinker and whatnot. So let's uh, let's not use that. Let's use the principal DSDF so we can practice with this. I'm just going to put it back to the way it was, and then let's make this into a kind of glass-looking see-through uh, viewfinder, okay? And it'll probably be the same material we're going to use for this, and then a different one for that one. So let's just call this one first uh, uh, viewfinder, which is the same one we're going to use for the uh, looking uh, lens right here. Okay, so we scroll down over here. All right, and way to make this one kind of transparent is that we're gonna turn on transmission right here. So that way it's now glass, and then we're gonna have to play with index of refraction and then the alpha, okay? But we need to see this in EV, right? Final render, we need to activate uh, right here under setting blend mode go to a uh, alpha blend okay to make it kind of glass type and then shadow uh alpha clip right there well, we're not really going to see that in there but we'll just 
making like that. So it's turn on screen space uh, reflection. I know I'm gonna need back face coloring right here. We might uh, because it's it's see through, but it's highly refracted. So we'll uh, play with that as needed. Okay. So I'm gonna turn it off for now. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna go here with the render engine tab and then make sure that we have okay sc uh, screen space reflection is already on. Uh, if it's not on, uh, guys, uh, just make sure that's checked right there. Uh, and ambient occlusion is also checked so we can get shadows on those uh, uh, different uh, nooks and crannies. All right. Um, bloom, uh, maybe later. Again, bloom will make it very bloomy. All right. So, um, yeah, let's, let's go with that for now. Let me go back to the shader. Okay. Remember, we turn on alpha blend or alpha clip. Okay. Um, then we're going with alpha blend right here with the back face. All right, so now let's uh, make this one um, uh, I think we can go with that one, back face calling off. All right, so the alpha right here. So if I scale this down, as you can see right there, it's uh, becoming transparent. You can actually see inside. Um, I didn't complete this. Normally you would see uh, the mirror right here and then it's just kind of like an SLR but it's a TLR twin lens uh, you'll be able to see it all right but it's like very clear right now there's hardly any re refraction there so let's kind of mess with the index of refraction here I might need to go a little lower on this one let's see um, just to kind of match the Definitely, we need back face uh, culling uh, on in there. All right, so there you go. So it's now kind of see through. Let me deselect it. Kind of see through it. Um, and the roughness, uh, we got to add a little bit more shininess to it. There we go. Very glass like. It's reflecting the top exactly how the glass on the camera is. Well, close to it. Okay, so there's that, and then we're going to select this one right here. We're simply going to pick the uh, viewfinder glass, and we should kind of get the same thing. Uh, I guess depending on the angle for it. Let's see if we need to make a separate one for it. So I'm just going to play with the uh, image of refraction right here to kind of see all right so it does need its own thing because it's kind of not showing its reflectivity and all that it doesn't look like this right here so while i have this selected and we have the same viewfinder glass right here i'm going to click on this one okay new material so if i click this it just gives it a new name with a 001 designation what's going to happen is that if i make changes to this one this one will be it will not be affected so we just by clicking that we made this material for this unique so let's give it a new name this is the uh, this is the uh, framing glass okay so now as you can see if I you know drop that to that one well it doesn't have a color because it's a the trans uh, transmission uh, let's say the uh, roughness here we can easily see it. there you go you can see I'm changing the roughness right here it's not affecting that because we made it unique on its own right so what we need to do here is kind of change the uh, image of refraction here even maybe the alpha to kind of uh, get a different look for it all right so we go lower uh, we want to make it a little looking like a little see-through I mean I'll reflect some of the uh, maybe 1.4 1.2 okay um, let's go with the uh, with the roughness all right maybe we need to make this really shiny right here in order to see uh, let me also kind of move it all right 
actually we can use it so it was my fault here that I have something blocking this so all right never mind okay let me uh, go back here let's just give it the same one as the viewfinder glass right there and uh, let me just select this model here okay the one you'll be getting will be the one that's going to be fixed so I'm going to click on my forward slash all right so let me see which one is affecting it all right this one right here so I forgot to uh, puncture a hole on this one so let me just select that one right there and then I'm gonna click uh, delete faces all right you don't need to do any of this because the one you'll get will have all this one so forward slash brings all that there we go all right no wonder <laughs> did all those uh, changes and then it's the reason why that's not looking glass is a metal blocking it. okay my apology all right so again uh, forget the uh, framing glass uh, it's all viewfinder glass okay there it is all right Next is this one right here. Uh, if we take a look at this, I'm going to click on forward slash again. All right, we just want to make this part right here as the glass part. So I'm going to press tab right here. I'm going to go to edit mode. And then I'm going to click on face uh, select right here or pressing number three in your alphanumeric. I mean the, uh, the one through nine at the top. Then select this. So by selecting this one right here, I want to add a different material to this. Right now it's all black plastic, okay? So what I need to do here is click plus, add a new material without clicking new because we can just select the viewfinder glass, the same one we've been using for the other two glass, okay? And then click assign while this one is selected and viewfinder glass is selected. I'm going to click assign and there we go. So now it has inherited the, uh, the same glass, I think. Let's see here. Will it benefit from it? Uh, uh, let's just leave it alone. Um, I'm going to click on forward slash now. There we go. So is it see-through? Yes. So you're seeing the, uh, the, uh, uh, the inside groove right there. I didn't mess with that one. That's supposed to be uh, the shutter. Um, I didn't bother doing the blades, so I doubt we'll see it, but uh, that's supposed to be open and closing depending on when you're taking your photo. All right, so we got all the glasses, uh, all the metal, and then uh, this one here, okay? So we'll do the same thing for the strap. So I'm going to click Tab to go to Edit Mode, and I'm going to select this face right here. So I'm in Edit Mode, and I'm Face Selection. And I just want to select all this parts right here. And the uh, fastest way to do that is while you have the center one selected is to, if you have a numpad, do control plus. It increased the selection until, if you went over, uh, of course, click minus. We'll do the opposite of that one. I'm going to click dot on the numpad right there to kind of zoom in. And we want all this to be uh, chrome metal, okay? If you don't have a numpad, uh, you can just shift click until you get all of those. Uh, you can also go select and um, where's my uh, increase select here? Uh, oh, we can also go with the uh, select uh, similar, but that might be overdoing it. Uh, yeah, I just kind of select that and then you can do alt and shift and click this line right here it selects that and then if you click this line also alt shift click alt shift click all right and you need another one inside there we go right there okay so that's the same thing as me selecting that and then control plus 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 to select that okay I'm going to scroll down here we're going to add another material leave it blank we're going to select the chrome metal while it's still selected click assign all right so that has that one all right now uh, we need to add that kind of rough kind of groove right here okay so um let's prepare that one so 
Uh, it's going to be the same black plastic, so we just need to add another one. So I'm going to click plus here. All right. We're going to select black plastic, but we're going to make it unique. Click this one. So we're going to call this one black plastic bump. All right. So it'll have that section with that. Or we could also do it with this one, and you can just add the bump map for that. Well, we're going to try and put it on this one. Okay. So we're going to add that selection now. So it's all this polygon right here. So I'm going to have edit mode, face mode right there, face select. And I'm going to click on Alt, hold down Alt, and then click this vertical, I mean horizontal line here. It selects it all the way. I'm going to add shift to my selection shift alt click this one and it adds it all the way around all the way down there now we just have to finish our selection here shift click those and we are done with this one so while all that is selected select your plastic bump and assign and nothing will happen because that's exact same material now we're going to go to a little bit more advanced stuff right here, a little crash course in uh, shading tab. All right, we'll have a proper lesson on this uh, shading tab uh, later. Uh, again, uh, kind of like just previewing shading here. So I'm going to go to shader, uh, shading right here, and let's preview this. I'm going to click on the port one, which is the render. All right, and we're kind of looking at like this, and those are the selections. Just the top one, the bottom one's not selected. I'm going to turn off my x-ray mode so we only see this one. I'm going to zoom in on this one okay, uh, by doing the scroll. All right, and I'm going to turn that turn back on so that it goes back in there. Okay, we need to add a bump for this one. So first, let's add a texture. We can add a uh, uh, texture right here. We're just going to add a simple add texture noise. I'm going to leave it right there. And I'm gonna shift, uh, sh drag this up by shift click, uh, holding down shift and middle click drag. I'm gonna move this one here, okay. And then I'm going to add another one, vector bump. Okay. Again, the noise is by going to add texture noise, and then add vector bump. I'm gonna put this bump right here. All right, or we can call, I guess we can go normal also. Uh, yeah, let's try to do normal. Uh, vector normal. Oh, sorry, normal map, not normal. Vector normal map. Okay, so color to color, drag, and then normal to normal. And as you can see here, we start seeing some weird pattern already, okay? So it's just too big for the noise right here. So let's make the scale like much larger, okay? So I'm gonna go like so, and we're talking, is that good enough? Uh, probably more. It's quite small. All right, I'll go with 300 just so that our numbers are. Okay, so by going 300 on that one, okay, and then the key here is that part is because it's coarse like that, it's not shiny, so I'm just gonna make it kind of rough. All right, so if I go to object mode right now, there we go. So it kind of has this rough kind of grip surface to it okay and then if you want more of that kind of protruding you have your strength right here you can make that more or make it less uh, let's probably make it a little bit uh, 1.4 i think that would work um, roughness also will affect it a little bit but let me zoom in and the distortion probably will make it a little bit uh, a little bit right there so that some there's some kind of variation 
Okay, and I think that should do it for that. Okay, uh, what else? Um, this one right here for the back. This is the uh, clear kind of uh, transparent plastic. Okay, so let's add another material, but let's select it first. So select that. Face mode, okay, control plus. All right, and I think that would do. I'm going to click the plus sign, new, since we don't have that red, right? And uh, base color, we're going to go red, okay? And uh, we're going to go with the transmission right here all the way. All right, and then the transparency, we'll kind of dial it down so it's a little see-through. And uh, let's see. And let me tab out uh, and click assign. There we go. All right. Maybe that's a little too shiny because you're just supposed to see the paper label. And maybe darken it a bit. All right. There we go. Okay. Looks good. All right, so, and I think if I go over here, that kind of completes our shading exercise. So we're able to create plastic material, metal material, glass material, and transparent plastic material. Also, we're able to use a uh, normal map, uh, a built-in procedural texture noise, just so that you can create this kind of grippy texture so you're supposed to okay so your thumb doesn't slide when you take your photo all right so we're all done with that one and last one right here is the label and uh, the label will be uh, a crash course in um, uv um, editing so we'll let's do that real quick okay so let's go to uv editing and we have formal lesson on this one uh, we have videos uh, prepared for you okay so first Make sure you select this label, and I'm in edit mode right here, so I'm gonna click tab to get out of that one. Let me turn on screencast. Uh, you do need to turn this on and off on each uh, window because it does kind of go away. So I'm gonna click on rendered view, viewport shading right here. I'm gonna select number one on the numpad here, or you can click this to go to the front or to graphic or number one, or let's say you're using a tablet, uh, you can change your viewpoint to front, numpad one, okay? We're gonna select this one, which is the label, and we need to first um, give this a, uh, uh, to unwrap it. Blender needs to know what this thing is, all right? So we're going to hit tab, and then I'm gonna press A to select everything. So it selected everything. So you don't have to go shift click 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 pressing a while you're in face mode will select everything tap double a deselects everything so a selects everything okay so what we need here is simply uh give it a uv unwrap so to do that you just press u that's in unwrap and then you want to project it from view like from this straight as you can see here blender now thinks that this is the uh the unwrapping for it based on this view which is correct right here okay so we're gonna go back to this um, window right here once we apply the texture so let's go to shading all right so this I would assume it's the same material as this this aluminum right here okay so let's uh, it has the aluminum already but we're gonna apply a picture to this all right, let's have a picture right here. So we have Donald Trump, we have Kim Jong-un. Uh, all right, here it is. So, all right, again, I'll give you a proper one, okay? All right, so I just drag the label right here. And then once we plug this to this one, it will add it to everything. So, okay, we don't want that. We'll click undo. So what we need to do with this material first is make it unique, kind of like what we did before. Click this one right here and we're going to call this one aluminum uh, label so that when we plug color to base color only this part gets affected 
doesn't look correct because if we go back to our UV editing, uh, there it is. It's like squashed like this. So select all, while all these things are selected in here, uh, you can press S right here to uh, scale just so that it covers as you can see right there. And then S Y, or I'm going to click on the scale tool. I'm going to click on Y here, which is this one. Okay, and I'm going to go to my move tool. All right, we're getting there. Scale again. We're trying to fit. All right, that looks good for now with, you know, with what we've got. And those things will show up, which is not good, but like I said, we'll give you a proper one that, uh, that you can uh, put here and it's not distorted like this one right here. Okay, so there it is. So let's take a look. I'm going to go to layout. All right. That looks all right. Okay, and uh, we can add some uh, shininess to it. So let's go add some roughness. All right, there we go. Okay. And let me just double check. And I think we got everything right here. Everything is labeled, all right? And that completes this lesson. So let me just turn this back on. So if I go to my uh, render tab and then film, I'm gonna uncheck transparent. So, so if you put a table or a, so a ground on this one, so let's do that real quick. Add a mesh plane. And we're going to just kind of scale this plane, lower the plane so that the brownie is just sitting on top of it right there. Scale it and change this to, let's say, let's give it the black plastic. All right, so just kind of shiny like so. And I'm gonna turn off all these gizmos that are kind of grids and whatnot. So turn off your overlay. It's this button right here. All right, so you get a nice little preview. All right, maybe this is not the good color. <laughs> Let's change it to, uh, um, what about the aluminum? Maybe too much. Anyway, you can pick whatever you want on that one and uh, uh, you can make a new object, of course. Uh, let's go gray plastic. All right. Just so that you could see it. Okay, there you have it. All right, there. Okay. Thanks for watching.